Hello everyone. Welcome to the Jordan DS Application Development Series webinar. My name is Penny. I am the moderator for today's session. In this webinar, we will be featuring Jordan Partner, Moksha Technologies, and we will be showing how you can maximize scalability in your bid management while stimulate your RFI evaluation process with an integrated vendor database. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to go over. First of all, today's session will be recorded, and if you miss out any of our sessions today, no worries as you will have the access to the recording later. Moving on, if you have any questions in between the session, do not hesitate to reach out to us by the chat or the Q&A button in the Zoom control panel. We will get to it as many as we can at the end of the webinar. You will also be directed to a feedback form after today's session. And as always, we are happy to hear from our users about your webinar experience. Your opinions matter to us, and we would really appreciate it if you could take a moment and provide your feedback for an improved webinar to attend in the future. Last but not least, we will be giving out two Jodet Academy vouchers today at the end of the webinar. So stay till the end with us, and who knows, you might be one of the two lucky winners. Moving on to the next slide. Today, we have the pleasure to invite Sudhir Saini, the Enterprise Sales Manager, and Guru Jot Singh, the software developer at Moksha Technologies. They will be speaking along with Edwin, the Senior Technical Consultant at Jodat, about how we can embrace agility in the vendor onboarding process and the way to get started on the Jodat platform. Sudhir, Guru Jot, and Edwin, would you like to say hi to the audience? Hi audience, thank you everyone. Thanks for joining. Welcome on board. Let's uh, take it forward. Over to Guruji. Hi everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Thank you for taking the time to join the webinar. We're looking forward to it. Passing it over to Adrian. Hello everyone. Adrian here. Welcome to the webinar and thank you all for joining. Over to you, Penny. Thank you, Adrian. With that, let's have a group have a look on today's agenda. To start with. We will first have a quick introduction of what is Jodet and what is Moksha before we move on to talk about the typical business pain points and how Jodet and Moksha can help. And we will have a live demo showcasing the features of an e-procurement application for bid management and what you can achieve with the Jodet DS platform. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Sudhir to kickstart the presentation. Sudhir, over to you. Thank you, Penny. Thank you very much. And I uh, hope I'm audible. Thank you. Let me share my screen, please. Yes. So, uh, good, after, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you people have joined. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining. So, uh, the, we are on the Jogger Progress Showcase. So, where we will be, as uh, Penny stated, so we will be just discussing what we are, what Jogger does, what Moksha Technologies does. And uh, what's our history? What uh, for the IT fraternity? What we are doing? Our, what are our uh, use cases? And in the end, we'll be showcasing you know, one of the applications which has been uh, made uh, on uh, Jogger platform, which is from Ebiting by my colleague uh, Gurjot. So, uh, if you talk about our punchline about Jogger, just a second. So you see over here, our question is simpler and faster digital transformation. So Jogad is, I would see it as over here is the simplest uh, platform for a digital transformation. Anyone get rid of digital transformation? People talk about a lot about digital transformation from uh, uh, legacy application, also we keep on talking about, but the digital transformation in a faster way and a simpler way. What does a simpler way mean? A non coder can also make applications. It might be that okay, for complex application, you might be needing a uh, help of a uh, uh, IT guy, but he can make application, which makes it simpler, faster. Yes, of course, that's that's the key what uh, today uh, the world is needing or the IT potential needs. What's our history? Started in 2009. We are in uh, 2022. I'm not going with the complete history, what all versions we have been through. We started with version one, 
we are in my uh, enhanced for two, three, four, five, six, and now we are at seven. I would say certain of our positives here is that we are an organization which is open source, number one. Number two, it started from a workflow engine organization from a low code and is in low code. There are people jumping to the scene the way that they are uh, jumping into uh, the low code uh, market. But R is the strength that our DNA is uh, built on uh, on the code. We are currently with the version DX7. If you talk about DX7, what does it have or what enhancement it has from the earlier version, which is version six from the test? Certain things. Point number one is the APM. You have the same uh, thing that okay, forms and drag and drop a workflow, but there were some challenges when the, it was coming to the performance of uh, how we check the performance of the application. We all have come across uh, when we go, go in the implementation or in the uh, phase of uh, developing an app, when it comes that okay, the database is not performing, he points out to our application guy, application performance to uh, points out to our uh, infra guy that there is a performance issue, but we don't know what exactly it is. So DX7 is enhanced with APM, which is application performance monitoring tool, which gives a complete control of the performance and a complete logs of that, where exactly, what exactly is the bottleneck, why it is not performing. This was the enhancement from the earlier version, which was version six. Number two, we were recognized and we had the new technologies like Docker, Kubernetes, OpenShift technology, which was added in DX7 as a container, containerized environment. And the number three was a PWA app. What a PWA was that? You make, okay, you have a mobile, whatever application you are having on a Jogger platform, it's a mobile ready. As in size, when you change of your display, does it adjust? Answer is yes. So these were the enhancements what we did it in uh, DX7. We are on the verge of version eight. What a version eight would be? I don't have an exact idea, but still I would uh, like to highlight over here. DX8 would have some more enhanced feature than DX7 in terms of UI UX, and might be some. Uh, like even in the same single view, you can see how my application would look like on my mobile phone, how it would be performing on a on a desktop. So that gives the glimpse to the developer that how it would be looking like. What are changes I have to work out? Number two is we have got certain uh, acknowledgements from Forrester and Gartner, if you see on the right hand side where I'm hovering my mouse. So these are certain things which have been awarded, or I would say as acknowledgements, what we have got from the market. What are the highlights? If you just see, we are the only and only organization, I would say it as, which is on the IBM's Red Hat marketplace. So in marketplace, there are there are many local companies. As I told that the competition is coming up day by day, but we have been recognized by IBM, by Red Hat, to be certified on the uh, OpenShift platform, which is again, we, Five years down the line, all these cloud or VMs will be definitely, that is what the data or the prediction is, that it will be moving to a, a Docker Kubernetes or uh, technologies like OpenShift. Are we ready for this? Yes. If you have to jog it, the answer is yes. Number two is uh, technology agnostic. You want to use it on AWS, your cloud, or any of the cloud, Alibaba or B cloud. Can I use the uh, platform? Answer is yes. Can I use it on premise? Answer is yes. We have implementation across 157 countries. We are recognized as we were speaking earlier, also by Forrester and Gartner. We have 3,500 installs every month. Red Hat, we discussed, and the people are talking about hyperledger, people are talking about smart contracts, people are talking about blockchain. Can we develop certain applications which are uh, uh, based on uh, the blockchain technology using Jogger? Answer is again, yes. We have certain use cases. Where hyperledger has been used on the back end uh, for blockchain and front end as uh, Joker. And also, we have been, I would say, it as uh, awarded as a catalyst fund for from uh, Cardano to uh, top of certain integration, certain applications on that. Why the 
people or i would say it as these organizations are uh, investing uh, onto uh, joke citizen developers now i would say it as in the next 5 years the application requirement would be equal to the last 30 years that means if we go with the same traditional way of developing the applications can uh, it or a cio or a, a it fundity can we uh, fulfill the needs of the uh, business answer is no what's the way out we need to be faster we need to reduce the time we need we need to have new developers because developers are not increasing so we want non coders to develop certain applications which can be again enhanced by the, the uh, developer community we, this is the crux why people are there about investing on to uh, jogat flexibility to extend can we have a, a plugin architecture that is can we gel well, well with the old legacy so say for example i have a business suite or uh, or the gd but or xyz i have uh, name as a erp can i make something around this application can i extend jogat to uh, that answer is again yes so these are certain uh, positives of i would say it as our uh, uh, platform what exactly if you see the platform looks like the architecture for scaling and flexibility this gives the glimpse of the jogat platform which is here bottom infrastructure as i was speaking earlier i would like to highlight it again over here it is a technology agnostic platform you have any of the clouds you are on premise you want to use a middleware of that spare or you want to use it uh, oracle uh, web logic or ias can i use it answer is yes can i use it in docker can i use it in linux answer is yes on prem hybrid anything in the green one if you see where i'm holding my mouse you have form builder list user process these are the main four pillars of the platform when i say four pillars form what does a form do you just drag and drop certain uh, from one left hand side when you open up the canvas of uh, jobet you will have a bucket which has a uh, drag and drop say for example in my um, uh, i want to drag a text i want to drag drag uh, the date field i want to drag signatures and anything like that i make my application that's a form this is the tabular tabular form of the form user view i can have a user view depending upon the role and uh, depending upon the field also uh, we can do it out which we'll be showcasing further ahead we can also use our own css or other things what we want to use it out a process builder which is again one of the tracks for us i would say it as a enterprise level of workflows which are needed can be made using jogat the main i would say it as the a positive or one of the positives of our platform is integration you cannot work in silos you have to uh, you cannot replace your uh, old erps immediately also we have to integrate with the databases it can be mysql or the or xyz or any of the uh, databases so do we have the technology for apis for uh, json java or uh, rs so answer is yes if you see on the top this is the layer where you have a uh, the user layer where you can view it out on a different different uh, uh, screens and over here where i am holding a mouse the jogit market is it is really a rich marketplace where you find 130 plus applications used for business which you can download and start using it out from the day one you can en enhance it also so this is the uh, architecture i would talk about or i would say it as uh, joget has it has it it is all mobile ready cloud ready like an architecture so what moksha is moksha if you see the word moksha means peace of mind we are all of uh, joget and what what makes us different one of the arms is hybrid thinking passion solution we are client focused we are uh, customer obsessed our leaders our leaders are also from the c level of the it industry from healthcare and uh, other industry verticals so they understand the pain of the cio cxos so that they the product 
they, the enhancements what they think is a step ahead. Teamwork and yes, that of course, that, uh, fun. And when you talk about the hybrid thinking, guys, we ensure that the legacy uh, investment done by the CIO is not put into uh, trash, it has been used. So these are certain uh, deliverables from our uh, organization, what we do. What are the services we do? We do CIO services. We just discussed about this futuristic and uh, enterprise uh, architecture and delivery excellence. CIO services, we already discussed about some hybrid, of my hybrid thinking. By saving the uh, CIO, what does CIO want? He wants to deliver more applications. Developers remains the same. Can he develop? See, for example, a developer is developing. I'm just giving an hypothetical example. A developer develops, say, uh, an old way two applications a year average for a complex application six months. Can the same developer deliver two into X, say for example, three or four X? With Jogan, the answer is yes. That's what the CIO wants. That's what the platform delivers to them. Okay. So, and can the uh, ROI be uh, one of the best and the TCO be reduced? Answer is yes. Futuristic platform. We have also discussed or about this platform. This is, I would say it as a application, a composable application architecture. Whatever applications you are making, making, developing using Joget, can be today you are on on-premise ERP, say for example, and tomorrow you want to migrate it to a cloud uh, ERP. Can the same applications be moved or integrated with the cloud or with the future uh, applications that you are for your future ERP? That is what Joget has put out. Docker, Kubernetes, GitHub. We do well gel with all these uh, DevOps technologies, enterprise architecture. The enterprise wants a high availability. And again, he wants uh, uh, data security. He wants to have internal and external users. He wants to have different uh, DR, and uh, uh, I would say it as a UAT uh, and other things. Can we do it out? Answer is yes. So, what services delivery excellence fine, but management consulting, we do product consulting, enterprise, we've already discussed in uh, detail, and certain custom applications, what we have been uh, developing. By uh, using Jogad, we have many use cases. I'm just highlighting a couple of them, like say, about the name, to name out is Cisco, Department of Defense, GGN. And the favorite logo, uh, the Adam does not emerge. What did Cisco do? Thousand screens, a small team of, I would say it as a, a small team and 24 weeks. That's the CIO's pain to die. What he wants, he wants with the same resources to deliver more to, I would say, multiply it by application because the world needs five times more application from the last uh, 30 years on the FEC Department of Defense. Department of Defense uses Joget for 35,000 users and that were offline. So they have certain uh, security where they don't want to get the data access. Can, uh, can the application be made on Joget which are offline? Yes, answer is yes. And see, when we come about the securities and other things, Department of Defense or Cisco, which are which work uh, PCI DSS or DSA, which is a defense information system app. Do we have that level of security uh, certificates again and services, GGL securities? GGL is an organization in uh, Ireland, which is into uh, uh, which is into a high uh, product value uh, uh, logistics. They also use Joget for their IoT based of application. So we not only from a simple application or a to IoT to blockchain level of applications, Joget and uh, Joget has been. What did Daimler do with it? Daimler, we see Daimler's uh, engines come in the market. There is a lot of changes in the engines and if, if they change from A to A plus one, the complete flow on the workflow has been uh, designed in uh, Joget. So these are certain use cases. Again, if we talk about the industry vertical, we split it out into six verticals, government and defense, where if you see, we have already discussed about uh, Department of Defense. We do have uh, 
Saudi government over here. Saudi government uses the platform in the local language, which is Arabic. That means we have more than 15 plus languages, which can be of uh, uh, local can be set for that. So French, we have uh, the French Ministry of uh, France using it out. We have other uh, government entities. We have IBM, which is our partner. We uh, work with them in many of the opportunities that we are working in process. We have Cisco, then Star, and many technology companies. If you go to the bottom, the uh, yellow color. The financial industry, which is one of the largest industry for adopting the low code uh, technology. You have Bank of Indonesia, uh, Bank Mega, Taxi Charge from uh, South Africa. So there you find many people jumping on this and leveraging the platform. In manufacturing, in Middle East, if you talk about, we have uh, NFPC, we have uh, Gulf Painter, and Thala, then Dasma, then Al Sharabi. There are many companies to name it out who are investing with Joget and getting the benefits of, in terms of uh, TCR and ROI. When we talk about the top layer, if the light green color is where I'm holding my mouse. So, in the healthcare industry, we have across uh, the uh, globe. So we talk about US, we have care first. We talk about Middle East, we have investors. We talk about other uh, Asian uh, markets also. We do have certain use cases over there. So I would like to showcase one of the application which is made on uh, using Twitter. So what does this application do? So we not only don't um, metric this as the benchmark, you can, or the IT fraternity can uh, develop applications using the uh, AI where I'm doing, we are doing certain projects on AI where it is uh, invoice matching with TensorFlow and then TensorFlow we do have plugins under that. We have, uh, we have with the uh, uh, PyTorch, which is uh, Facebook's uh, uh, product for AI. So you can make applications using the AI technology. You can use making the blockchain or the smart contracts that world is talking about. World talks about now today is uh, customer onboarding. So all these sort of applications have been made. So in this case, what we will be showcasing it out for our claims would be a simple process or application where you have a customer onboarding. He, uh, you onboard a customer with all the documentation, certain approvals under that, and whether the legal has approved the, uh, the supplier to onboard it out, the customer has done onboarding. The procurement raises an RFP or a RFQ or a RFI, which has been sent to the uh, point number three is in the, uh, to the approver and the internal, which is internally sent to the supplier for bidding it out. The supplier sends the bid. The ranking is done L1, L2, L3 by the by, by the system. And of course, you can do the comparisons and a lot of dashboards can be seen onto that. Plus, there is a reverse bid. What is a reverse bid? The procurement selects three suppliers. He calls the three suppliers they online compete with each other and then the finally the final prices come so that sort of the, the benefit of making x with uh, investment of only x dollars x to the power of i would say it is n would be the roi what the uh, uh, business gets it out so they save a lot onto these by making these sort of applications what are the business points of, of business pain points? I would say as for uh, today's world, when we talk about sign, sign out resources, operation cost, we've already uh, discussed on this. Yeah, data. If someone wants data, I want certain report. Okay, let me go to the IT, get it done, and then again, it take time. Security. Can I have a BOQ uh, with, on a pen drive, which can be a pen drive, can be here and there? So there are certain pain points. Can I digitalize them? Yes, that's what our answer is. What does it result? This is a just glimpse of the front view. I would say it as the uh, front how to be look like uh, the e procurement. What my colleague Gurjot will be showcasing it out. Welcome the dashboard, the vendor registration, the RFI, the procurement, the milestones, and the, the uh, vendor management. If you see over here uh, how the uh, form is built up into the uh, vendor onboarding, certain dashboards the workflows where, where you see that the, about the activities and the tools where you have 
tools like email tools, data about database tools to uh, update the database to uh, I would say it as to APIs. So that sort of uh, work, workflow and processes are there. And in fact, we already discussed, we want to go into more details into the forms, which is easier, which, which can be developed. The granular permission, I'm from a technical. Can I see the commercial pricing been sent or been quoted? Answer is no. So you as a, a, a business can define what data to be shown to internal or to the external customers or internally also what has to be that level of uh, granular permission control it is there for what what would be the internal if i'm say for example i do have external internal users what the external would show, see and what the internal would see shortlisting yes as we speak we spoke earlier also we have 130 applications on the marketplace if you see on the bottom there is a internal chart what is this internal chart if if I am a supplier to organization X, I can have a chat with the supplier that when this is my code, this is what it is. And then even the sub supplier can, or even the procurement can have a chat with me. So this is also one of the, out of that 130 marketplace applications which has been downloaded. And used. So that means that applications can be downloaded and integrated and combined, and then it can be used as per the need. Whatever application we are making, is it available on mobile phones? Answer is again yes, which we'll be showcasing you to you to you shortly. So, what benefits does it give to the business? I would say it is easy. What changes as soon as you make an application, sometimes it comes, oh, we want to exchange because user keeps on changing. Now, in today's world, we I would say I'm I'm a, a, a pre-millennium born. Pre-millennium bond, we are only 30% of the workforce. I would say 70% of the workforce right now, 30% is post-millennium. What did this post-millennium? There is a difference in the nature of these guys. They want, they change very fast. They want the user ask that okay, today I have seen this. I don't want this many of clicks. You have to change this. Can the business or can the platform gel with the requirement of the millenniums, which would be 70% in the next five years? Can this platform be that is the agility what we have at all? I would say TCO, we have already discussed in detail about the TCO about, about platform ROI. Yes, you get the best ROI because the developer who was making X applications in a year is making minimum four X application now. That is the core what the CIO gets. And can I use it on prior containers, Kubernetes, uh, GitHub, or anything like that? Answer is yes. Integration, we have already discussed. That's the core of our, uh, one of the codes I would say it as six, being six and three. It takes, for others, it might take uh, X time we, for integration, only for integration. We are, I would say it as, it's not a commitment, but my average, I would say it as, it's X by four, what I know. So uh, what does it achieve without a unified data or streamlined and I would say it as uh, one single uh, uh, data source, analyze the data when it is on the same bidding module, what we'll be showcasing right now, which country the importers happen maximum, which country we are exporting maximum. So that sort of one single data we can have it as secure data permissions are there, that what a technical user is doing, what a sales is used to seeing it out. And the timelines also where we can set up the time as at this, if in case this is not finished, it goes to the next, uh, excluding the uh, approval one. Number two, all the statuses of the complete bid can be seen by any of the personas who is working there. It is a supplier or it is a procurement. So what does this result? The result for this is that digitalization, number one, we have already discussed our tagline, what we started in the, uh, in the starting bus. The uh, we deliver faster and digitalize faster. So that's the speed, the speed of life we do it out. Number two is the uh, single data uh, source of data, yes. And number three, with this application, what deliverables the uh, customer got, especially for the, the bidding, what we have, my colleagues will be taking it forward ahead from here would be the secure data access using certain internal as well as for the external users. So our uh, global team, we do have an office in uh, 
uh, our HQ is in uh, Maryland. We do have offices in uh, Australia. We are there in uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, and of course we have an ODC center in uh, India. Plus we are there in Middle East, I'm from Middle East, and uh, then we have in in US and uh, of course in Canada. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much. I would hand it over from here to my colleague uh, Gurjo, who will showcase this application, what we had discussed. For any question and answers, I believe uh, Penny would be taking it ahead. And if there's anything, you can just chat with her and we can take it forward. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Let me stop sharing and hand it over to my colleague. Thank you. Over to Gurujo. Gurujo, are you there? Hey, Sudhir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over to All right. you. Thank you very much, Sudhir, for your very insightful presentation. Uh, in the meantime, the team is just trying to fix the audio issue, and we truly apologize for that. And okay, so since we are here today, and before we let Gurujo to um, continue the presentation, uh, the demo, let's have a quick poll so let me launch the poll and here we go okay so if you are currently managing your procurement activities manually through emails and fact sheets then um, please go ahead and select the first option and if you are using a procurement solution at the moment then the second option is and the third option is for those who are using an in-house application at the moment to manage their procurement activities. I will leave for a few minutes for the audience to vote. Let's see. Okay, you can see that um, the result is coming through. The number is changing. Let's see. And... Uh, all right, let's end the poll. Let's end the poll and let's see what we got. Okay, so we can see that 43% of the attendees here is currently managing manually. They are doing their procurement activities in all in a manual way, where it's more on through emails and spreadsheets and the manual um, um, methodologies. While 40% of them is using a procurement solution and we have another 43 of them is using um, in-house application at the moment. So I believe this will provide a little bit of insights to um, our subsequent presentation by Gurujot. And if that, I'm going to hand it back to Gurujot to kickstart the demo. Gurujot, over Thank to you. Thank you very much, Penny. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So before we kind of jump into the demo, I just want to reiterate some of the points that Sudhir had mentioned. So when developing in Joget, there are four major components of the platform. So the first one is the form builder, which allows us to kind of drag and drop and create those forms, whether we want to add a date or a text area or a file upload. That is where we can kind of create the form. The second is the process builder. So the process builder allows us to actually configure and build those workflows. So for example, with the e-procurement system, if it's the project manager, the procurement who is submitting the new RFI, and then it goes through in a procurement approval, and then whether there is an email tool or a database update tool. So that is where we can kind of build out the workflow. The third is the data list builder. So the data list builder actually allows us to kind of visually build out tabular lists and reports from the data that is uh, entered into the system through the forms or other forms. And the final is the user view builder, which allows us to actually build out the UI of the entire application. And when we go through the e-procurement portal, that demo, we will kind of showcase each of these features and how they can be used to kind of enhance the application. So the second thing I just wanna highlight again is that all of Joga applications are mobile ready. So they're out of the box and they're responsive to fit desktops or mobile or tablet. Um, by default. So that is another thing and a really cool feature that Joget has. So at this point, what I'll do is I'll come over to the procurement user. And when I come over here, we are in the app center. So here from the user, we can see all of the applications that we have access to. So in this case, we can see that we have the e-procurement portal as well as the simple messaging application, which we use in the reverse bid. So why don't we come over to the welcome page? And when we come to the welcome page, we can see that we have our banner and we have um, kind of some abilities or some actions that we can perform as the procurement user. 
And it's important to note that this is totally customizable. This is something that was put together very quickly, but it can be customized any way that you would like. For example, we can uh, change the menu, whether we want to have it in line with the logo or if we want to have it vertical, uh, if we want to have a different image here, if we want to change the location of the image, all of that can be done very easily and quickly. So we'll come over to the dashboard. And when we come over to the dashboard, we have the ability to create um, reports or dashboards with meaningful information. And uh, just loading it over here. So for example, in our system, we have the first dashboard, which is a counter that shows us the number of active vendors in the system. The second is the active vid. So we can see that there are 20 active vids in, in the system. And finally, we have the shortlisted to award, which is 11. So if we scroll down, we can see that we have a bar chart for the project budget versus the final price, as well as some data lists of the all closed bids, as well as the all reverse bids. So these dashboards can also be configured very easily. Um, so that is available as well. So we come over and we have a couple of different options. For example, the vendor registration, we have the new RFI RFQ, we can move over. We have project milestones, which is the invoicing, as well as uh, whether we want to uh, review any queries or you know contact the procurement from the um, vendor side. So what we'll do now is we'll kind of go through the reverse bid flow and show how that flow is built out and what are some things that we built out. So we come over to the new RFI RFQ and we can see a form that we have built out. So all of this is drag and drop. So for example, we have the project details and here we have the date which we have as read only. So we have configured that and it's being automatically generated. We have the bid ID as well, which is auto-generated. We can define the type of bid, which is a drop-down select box. And in this case, we can select buying or selling. Let's say we want to do buying. Then we have a master category. So in master category, we can come and choose, let's say, for example, IT software. And we can see dynamically uh, there has been a subcategory that has populated with a few options. So let's say, for example, system software and utility software. From here, we have the bid category, and we can select the reverse bid. And in this case, in our workflow process, based on what we select, there will be a different flow. So we have configured based on whether we select reverse bid, it will follow a certain workflow. So next, we can select the subsidiary. So in this case, let's say it's a Tory, and we can choose the project number. Let's say it's project six, and we can say project six reverse bid. We have some additional fields, for example, the currency, we can choose OMAR, AD, USD, the budget, let's say, for example, it's 100,000. We have the project manager, which we have auto-populated based on the current user in this case, which we have configured using a hash variable, which is a cool feature that Joget has. We can choose the project location. In this case, let's say USA. We can choose the date of delivery, the warranty, whether it's required, any additional details. And then below, if we come over here, we have some file uploads. So here we can see by the asterisk that these are actually mandatory fields and they have been configured based on PDF and doc type only. So if you do submit any other type, it won't be uh, allowed to up, there will be a validation error. So in this case, let's upload some sample files. And when we come below, we can see the BOQ details, which is the bill of quantities. So here we actually have the ability to do line-wise if we want to add manual. We can also do a bulk import. For example, we have a sample import here. We can fill out the information and then we can choose the file and we can import the entire Excel all at once. So that's really great if you want to fill out a lot of items at once. Then we can do a line-wise edit and complete. And then below we have the recommended milestones where we can fill out some information as well as add some additional remarks. So once I submit this, it will go over to the procurement inbox and the procurement will do the approval. And once the procurement does the approval, we can see over here, your request has been submitted successfully. And we can come over to the procurement inbox and come to the buying inbox. And we can see that the bid has been populated in the inbox for an RFI approval. So when we come over here, we can see that all of the respective information is available in the form of a subform. So that is uh, a feature of building out a form in Jogat, so we can quickly reference all of the information. We also have the ability to determine visibility control or permission control based on certain information we want to show or hide. So, for example, we have built upon the BOQ details where the procurement can add information, for example, the past buying price, estimated buying price, as well as the make and the brand. So, in this case, let's say the laptop is $1,000 and we want to get it for $970 and we want a Lenovo. 
And then for the engine, we can say, okay, last time it was $10,000 and this time we want $9,700 and we want a Ford. So from here, from the vendor details, we have the ability to select the vendors. So the way it has been configured is based on the master category and the subcategory that we have selected in the new RFI form. So in this case, we can see all of the vendors who are available here have been mapped based on that master category and that subcategory. So we can select, for example, let's say Severe and Gurujoth over here. And then from here, we can approve this um, approval. So when we come over here and we select approval, we can see that based on visibility control, we have the ability to uh, edit some additional fields or add some additional information. For example, the vendor quotes to be compared, we can say that we wanna compare two vendor quotes in the shortlisting. Then we can select the bid closing date when we want the closing to happen. And then we can add some additional documentation, for example, the scope of work, SOW, the technical data sheet, spec docs, compliance doc, et cetera. So once we submit this form, it will go over to the business user for an approval and then second to the finance user for approval. So I'll come over and we can see that we have the business user and we can see that the menu items are different for the business user. That is because we have configured the user view to allow the business user to only complete some certain functions. So in this case, we have the ability to only do the approval as well as an onboarding. So we can come over here, we can review all of the respective information and we can complete that approval. Once we do that, it will continue in the workflow over to the finance user. Here we have, and then we can come over to the inbox and we can see that we can do the finance approval. Once again, we can review all of the respective information and based on that, we can say yes or no. And once we approve that, it will come back over to the procurement for a final acknowledgement that both the business and the finance have approved it and that we would like to send it over to the vendor. So we can see here that it's come up as procurement approval and we can come over and complete it. So at this point, once the procurement approves it, it's gonna come over to the vendors who have been invited to bid for that RFI. And the vendors have the ability to either confirm or regret their intent to actually bid on that RFI RFQ. So we'll navigate over to the vendor and we'll kind of complete that step from one of the vendors. And then we can move on to the technical review as well as the shortlisting, which also occurs. So I'll come over here to Gurujot and we can see in the vendor RFI inbox, if I refresh the inbox here, now we have the bid. So we can either confirm or we can regret our intent. In this case, let us confirm. And we can say, yes, I would like to confirm and agree to the terms and conditions. Once we do that, we have the ability to apply. So we can see the vendor organization. I'm part of Moksha. We can see the project details and we can fill out our commercial terms and conditions. So I'm just gonna come over and fill out some commercial terms and conditions. So we have the payment terms, the credit, uh, the quote validity, the delivery terms, the VAT number. We have the delivery days, the freight charges, as well as the delivery slash work completion time. So once we complete that, we can come over to the BOQ details and we can fill out our deviations rate and total amount. It's important to note that this BOQ, we have actually configured permission control. So we can't see the past buying price, the estimated buying price or uh, the make model. Um, that is limited specifically to the procurement side. So here we can fill out any deviations if we have and the rate, let's say for example, 980 per unit. And we can see that the total amount uh, has been automatically calculated. That is a calculation field in the form. Similarly for the engine, we can say that is $9,800 and then it has been calculated here. And then we also have the net total amount. Similar to the procurement side with the new RFI, we have the ability to export that Excel as well as import that Excel if we want to do a bulk upload. And then we can upload some documentation from the vendor side. So at this point, it will go over to the procurement user for a procurement assessment um, to acknowledge the deviations. And then once the deviations are acknowledged, they have the ability to pass it on to the technical user. So we come over here and we come to bid assessment and we can see the bid over here. And we can come down and we can see that we have limited the visibility to only show the deviations. So based on this information, we can pass it on to the technical user and then come over to the technical user to do the technical review. 
So here we can see, this is the technical approver view, and we have all of the respective details and we can see the deviations. Based on that, we can provide a weighted percentage. We can say that it is approved, add any additional remarks, and then complete. Once we complete that and the bid, the closing date has triggered, it will show up in the shortlisting inbox. So for example, if we come over here and I just open up a bid, we can see all of the information from the new RFI all the way to the vendor um, submission of their rate. So we can see all of the document uploads, the milestones, we can see the BOQ details, the vendors who are invited, and then we can see the vendor details over here with their net total amount, as well as the weighted percentage based on uh, what they have submitted. We can do a short listing here, which is a single selection as well as a line-wise item selection. And based on that, we can see another field has appeared for a final negotiated quote. And then we have the ability to shortlist. So if we come over here, how Sadir had mentioned before was we have the ability to review the vendor shortlisting as well as do a side-by-side -side comparison of those bids, download as well as shortlist the vendor. In this case, let's say we wanna do a reverse bid, we want to shortlist both vendors. Then once we do that for both items, we can dictate the start time and the amount of time for the reverse bid and then submit. So let's come over to uh, a reverse bid and we can see that we have over here the item. In this case, we have the engine. We can see the vendor name and we can see the rate that they have offered as well as the rank and the organization they are part of. So Below that, we can see the chat. So this chat has been embedded from another application in the App Center. Um, so we have the ability to extend that function functionality as well. So when we come over as a procurement, we can see all of the respective ranks and organizations. However, when we come over to the vendor, they will only be able to see their rank relative to the rate that they have offered. For example, if we come over to Moksha, which is in rank two, we can see that we are in rank two and we have bid $6,000. So based on that, we might say that we want to actually offer a little bit lower in hopes that we will get um, the rank number one. So let's say, for example, let's bid 5,700. We can submit. And now we can see that we are actually in rank number one. Similarly, from the procurement, they have the ability to see that now actually Moksha is in rank number one. So once the reverse bid, the time ends, uh, the vendors will be shortlisted based on their rank, their positioning, and they will receive an email congratul congratulating them that they have been shortlisted. So that is the reverse bid process. At this point, uh, I will actually pass it on over to Adrian to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Guruja. Um, right, so let me share my screen. Um, just to confirm, can you guys see my screen, Penny? Yep, you can see your screen. Great, thank you so much. Right, so uh, I'll be showing you guys on how you can get started with Joget. So first off, head over to the URL here. And once the page, once the page loads, so you'll see a big green button that says get started free. Once you click on it, you'll be directed to a page where you can choose the type of deployment that you wish Joget DX to run on. You can run it on demand, install it on premise, or run Joget on other deployment options. As Sudir did show this, so I'm just going to elaborate a bit. So Joget DX is platform agnostic, so it can run uh, on Windows or Linux. It can run on various application servers, such as Tomcat, JBoss, WebSphere, and a few more you can see here. Um, it also supports various databases, such as MySQL, Oracle, and MSSQL. You can also deploy JoggedX on cloud platform services, such as Red Hat, OpenShift, uh, Azure, AWS, uh, just to name a few. If you like, you can request for a demo on our website to let us showcase the JoggedX capabilities and share with you on what you can do with our visual builders and platform features. Or if you have a business use case that you'd like to address, let us know and we'll show you how to build the solution during the demo. So here are some feature articles that you can download and read. We have two white papers talking about how a lot of uh, IT enterprises these days are adopting cloud native approach 
coupled with high productivity tools that offers low code or no code application development, such as JuggerDX. So the first white paper explains why no code, low code running on OpenShift makes sense for every enterprise. And the second examines how this evolution could greatly improve developer efficiency while keeping the costs under control. Oh, and it also includes some real life case studies to highlight the potential upside of taking this approach. We also have feature highlights where the first one explains what are the key features of each visual builders do. And uh, the other one explains the APM, the application performance management that plays a critical factor in man monitoring and management of performance of software applications. We also have 12 downloadable case study booklets from various industries such as aviation, manufacturing, financial services, and so on. So it contains uh, real life case studies from some of our customers, providing information like uh, what issue they're trying to solve and how to get the X was able to help in providing those solutions. Right. So um, one of the case study is, uh, for example, in the banking and financial services industry, um, how they develop a customer onboarding system with Joget built over in the span of three months, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they wanted to build once and use everywhere kind of approach. So the, the form is the same and can be used in multiple application. I believe they also use some sort of machine learning to allow the user to effectively respond to different types of customers based on their respective behaviors. And uh, the mobile app architecture, I believe it incorporates AI to provide dynamic capabilities and update new services remotely. So you can use JogiDX to integrate with third-party software to meet your business needs as well. Ah, so um, as Sudin mentioned earlier, the current version is uh, version seven. And we have received a lot, uh, I would say, overwhelmingly positive read feedback. And we are rapidly moving forward for the next major release of Joker DX8. So the core focus of Joker DX8 will be on the enhanced user experience and the governance. We want to make sure the platform is more accessible to more users of diverse competencies and backgrounds. To mention a few features for the UX, We've actually redesigned the visual builders to be more intuitive and consolidated all the four pillars that mentioned previously from, to a single view with the added ability to switch to different device views from desktop, tablet, and mobile. So you can see your app would look like um, during the building phase. And uh, yeah, since uh, the default teams have already made your apps responsive, so you don't have to go develop your, your app again to cater for specific devices. Um, uh, this, uh, the DX8 also includes uh, built-in support for single page application to dyna dynamically display the page content fast and easy without reloading the entire page. Uh, we've also expanded the UI builder with support of page components that allows developers to customize individual pages and add information tiles, as you can see here on the screenshot. And there's actually so much more. Uh, as for the governance uh, portion, the exit will provide automated governance health checks and alerts to aid compliance in critical enterprise areas such as security, performance, and application quality. So for example, for security, you can check, it will help you check whether the user is authenticated, um, ensuring that your menus have been, have been set permissions accordingly, and ensure that your participants inside your workflow are mapped accordingly as well. As for performance, you'll check your CPU, your memory usage, your response times to help identify any potential bottlenecks and any sort of resource leaks. Quality assurance detects if there's any high error rates and checks the data integrity for running processes. So as you can see, we're not only providing you with tools to develop your application, we are also adding tools such as APM and governance tools to help maintain the quality of your application even after it has gone live. So if you're curious and want to take a peek, head over to this link and to try out the DX8 preview release to take a look at the new features available in DX8. Just as a reminder, this is a preview release. So um, expect to see bugs here and there and as the development team is are still working things out. So um, yeah, that's all for my presentation. Um, over to you, Penny. All right. 
thank you very much, Adrian, for the sharing. And I believe now we have got a little a bit of understanding of Jodat DS and as well as our upcoming Jodat DS8 preview. So with that, let's move on to the Q&A session. And let's see, let's see what are the questions that we have. Okay, all right. So we have the first question. Um, how does the machine learning and artificial intelligence to be the part of Jodat? To be part of the Jodat platform. So um, I believe these questions, um, Sudhir, you will be the best person to take this over. And can I leave this in your good hands? Thank you very much. Thanks. Are you able to hear me? Because uh, I was uh, got a message that was not properly. Is it okay? I'm audible. Yeah, it's a lot more clever now. Thank you. So uh, can I share my screen also, uh, Penny, for a minute? Yeah, sure. So when uh, someone asks that, how is it that uh, uh, the TensorFlow or uh, plugin of um, the AI can be used on that? So we do have inbuilt feature where if you see that if you go to the uh, to map plugin tools, we do have TensorFlow which is embedded in Joget. TensorFlow, what is TensorFlow? TensorFlow is a AI. Uh, uh, it's it's basically a Google's product, okay, built by Google. So it is already embedded in Joget, where you have the complete detail that how you can use it out. In this case, say for example, uh, image uh, 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 image sensing that whether it is a lion, whether it is what, so the label of that, and if it is a lion, it takes it out. And if it is, if you upload something as a car, if says it is a, uh, it's not a lion. So these sort of uh, uh, you will find it that it is already embedded and you can use TensorFlow or there are certain other applications also like open source PyTorch is also there. So someone asked what all it is there. So AI using TensorFlow and PyTorch, it is available. If you see over here, map tools to plugin. So you will find TensorFlow. You will find other uh, others also like Google uh, coordinates to capture it out. So these are all available where you can immediately use it out for your AI based application. Hope that answers the question. Back to you, uh, uh, Penny. All right, let me um, take the control and all right, yeah, I'll let Adrian share the screen. And with that, okay, thank you very much, Ed, um, Sudhir, for the for, for for the um for the insights for the sharing. And with that, uh, let's move on to the next question. Uh, we got pretty much here, so um, let me see. Okay, so the next question is um, the application will house the majority of our organization sensitive and vital business transactions, as well as some of the commercial data. So, um, what kind of level security assurance that um the Jodak platform can provide? And um, perhaps Sudhir and Will Jot could take this question. Thank you very much, Penny. When we discuss about the securities and the internal data for the organization, as we said, uh, we are rated five, the highest star rated by an organization called 14, uh, uh, 45, which does the certification of the platform in terms of security. So we are rated five by them, number two. We are BISA compliance, which is the highest level of uh, security in terms of data security. That's why US Department of Defense, Saudi government, why they are using it out? Because they know that this platform is a BISA compliant, which is Defense Information System Act. And it is also a PCI DSS compl uh, compliant. So as far as the security is concerned, it is well answered. You can go through our website also. There you will find all the links and the certifications for what we have. Thank you. Back to you, uh, Penny. I hope I, uh, I was, it was well answered and uh, the audience is okay with the answer. If there's anything, we can uh, again have a deep drive. Okay, all right. Thanks, Thanks. Sujil. And yeah, we got uh, one last question before we move on to the next slide. So um, do you have high availability in this application architecture for automating the critical business processes? Mm, any any thoughts? Okay, thank you. Thank you for asking mm. this question. A nice one. Yes, high availability when you said in the enterprise architecture when we were discussing. So we do have 
different versions of Jogair. And there are versions like we talk about enterprise and enterprise, large enterprise, where you have high availability with between two different nodes. You can high, have high availability on the uh, using the load balancer. You can have high availability from one uh, uh, say it as domain to uh, other domain or a DR setup. The answer is for this question, yes, we do have all these different enterprise level of uh, architecture which is required. Okay. Back That's to you, Penny. Thank you. Thanks for the sharing. And uh, with that, uh, due to time is of the essence, uh, we will move on to the next slide. And if there's only more Korean A, we will leave it um, to our team to answer it by email later on. So with that, uh, before we go, feel free to check out the Jodat ecosystem where you can enroll in our Jodat Academy short courses, download the Redmi apps from the Jodat marketplace and customize it to suit your business needs. And we have various video tutorials where you will be able to watch it via the uh, DX website to learn more about the platform. With that, let's see who are the two lucky winners of the Jodat Academy vouchers. Okay, um, let's see. All right, so congratulations to Umesh and Jerry. Umesh and Jerry, congratulations. Um, we will reach out to the winners via email and get those vouchers to you guys. So please keep an eye on your inbox and if you don't see anything there, don't forget to check your spam folder. So before we end the session, we are pleasure to have one of our customers, Catalyst India, an award-winning NGO to share about their user experience with Jodat DX and how they have been addressing their business challenges and remains on the cutting edge of innovation with the Jodat platform. We have their sharing recorded and we'll play the video right right after this once again um yeah all right so one sorry again, my bad <laughs> yeah yeah that might happen so uh once again i'd like to thank everyone here for staying till the end with us and it's glad it's great to have you guys here and don't forget to provide your feedback in the feedback form directed to you after the webinar thank you everyone and i hope you enjoyed the video stay safe and have a nice day thank you Catalyst India is an award-winning NGO that stands for the economic empowerment of women. Catalyst prepares young women in STEM for leadership roles and thereby enhances the diversity in the workplace. Having started with 10 girls in 2007, Catalyst has reached 1,400 girls and is ready to quadruple its impact. Technology has played a pivotal role in Catalyst's growth journey. Four years ago, it developed its first CRM solution using the Jogit platform. In 2019, Moksha Technologies offered its licensed version at a nominal cost so that Catalyst could, could reach a larger user base as well as automate its processes further. This has helped management make more effective decisions in a timely manner.